in the early part of the of the, of the country, uh, doctors and lawyers and uh, they they they'd ride mules and come in mules and, uh, horses and buggies and come in Cadillacs to the singers and all set set side by side and, and sing. Second harp is a it's not just a singing. Uh, it's it's the fellowship that you enjoy being with your friends and uh, 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 that you hadn't seen in a year, and then when they get done with the day's singing, they'll sing the part in hand, and they'll, the officers stand up and everybody will come by and shake hands with them, bid them farewell for for an, another uh, year. When they had the Chattanooga Convention first, it was four days, and uh, they would come. Uh, uh, horses and wag wagons and, and campers and ox wagons. They tra travel from for a week of getting there, and then they sing four days, and then they take part in hand, and they'd be on the way back. I got started in uh, 1953. I went to uh, a singing down in Mount Zion. It was two days singing. I was going down there to, for a, 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 a reunion or a dedication of, for, of, of all my family, and uh, I walked in the back of the church, and they were I sat down. And they were singing a song, and they it just it, uh, it, it just I just had a feeling like I was joining the church. I was uh, it was just a, a feeling that I'd never had before. And when I when the singing was over, I went up there. Uh, Bud McGraw, Tom McGraw, and Lee McGraw, and Buford McGraw, and all of the McGraws was up there. And, and I asked Uncle Bud, I said, Bud, Uncle Bud reckon I can learn how to sing this? And he said, yeah, you got just about enough of McGraw in you that I, you can sing. <laughs> and so that night I went down to his house and borrowed a book. And I borrowed a book that didn't have no backs on it, just uh, the backs had been lost. And I could roll the book up and put it in my back pocket. And I carried that book around with me for two or three weeks trying to learn, learn something about it. The Sacred Heart started in 1844. And the Cooper book didn't start until 1902. And uh, what they done, it, they taken, they taken the songs out of the original, original Sacred Heart, Joe James of the uh, revision, and they uh, just changed the alto. Changed the altos uh, uh, to some of their leaders. And they put, a, we had a lawsuit with them, for, and uh, we went to court, and uh, the judge handed down a decision if they uh, had changed the words or changed the uh, notes or anything that uh, uh, it was all right. So they started printing the cookbook and they uh, they have been uh, singing that cookbook since 1902. When they first printed it, uh, they printed our songs, but they just uh, put their alto to it. And that and we didn't like it because they printed and put our songs in there. But the judge said that if they change any notes or, or titles or uh, uh, words or anything, the, 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 it was all right for them to do it. In 1935, there was a group in Alabama come over and bought the copyrights and, and title to the James book and formed the Sacred Heart Publishing Company, Denson Revision. And they, and then they, they had the Denson Revision over there uh, until 19 and uh, 85, we moved, we moved it to, uh, to a place that we built, Sacred Harbor Headquarters in, in out of Carroll. Okay. Uh, and we've been meeting there ever since. Well, when I started singing, I was just so enthused in it that I started uh, writing music and I started uh, teaching singing in schools 
and they elected me uh, as secretary of the Sacred Heart Publishing Company in 1959. And I was secretary of that company from 59 to 2002. Senior schools, uh, uh, you have to get an education in Sacred Heart just like an education in school. You gotta learn how to read the notes, you gotta learn the tonality of the notes, and how to beat time. And, and, and uh, no, there's no two people in the world that has the same time. Uh, there's a little sum about you, you, your rhythm. If, it, if it, everybody had the same time, all the baseball players would bat 300. <laughs> but they, they're different, they get different rhythm. Uh -huh. And uh, uh, they, I started teaching, and then when I started teaching, I, my first school, they, it, it traveled like gossip. And, and they get me to teach another school over here, another school over there. First thing you know, that I, I was teaching all over the United States. Hmm. And I have taught in England. A lot of people have come to Sacred Heart singing that's never been to singing before. And they don't know the tune, they don't, they don't know the song when we sing them. So we first sang through on the notes to teach them the rhythm and, and, and tune. And then when we do that, we come back and sing the words. When, when we uh, first go through it, the ones that knows how to sing it, mm -hmm. they just sit there. And the, the ones that don't know how to sing, uh, they, they, they sing the notes. But it, it, it becomes such a fellowship that when we sing a song, everybody sings uh, the, the notes first. Okay. I started this first state convention, Georgia State Convention in 1962 up in Alpharetta, Georgia. And then uh, I went and taught him a, a, a singing up in New England. I, I taught a singing uh, school in, uh, in uh, Nevada, Seattle, Washington. And lots of them, uh, when you teach a singing school, they, they say, we want to keep singing. So I said, wait, well, uh, you, you'll form your uh, convention or sing all day singing. And uh, all day singing is one day. A convention is two days or more. So uh, they would form, form them as a singing and then they'd meet at night and practice and gather on s Saturday or Sunday. 